I'm Peggy Puffer, and I would like to introduce uh, Juliet Rago, who I'm sure many of you know. I've been to many of her exhibits in the Concord, Wayland, um, and Lincoln area, but she's well known, and some of you may not know uh, some of her background, which I've found, I've read it a couple times, but I found it very interesting, so if you'll just let me take a minute to tell you a little more about her. Uh, Julia received her MFA, Master of Fine Arts degree, from the Institute of Chicago. She studied at the Academia Belzarte in Florence and has traveled and painted in England, France, Scandinavia, and Italy. Most recently, she participated in an art workshop in Assisi, where she exhibited her paintings in a group show um, in the commune there. She illustrated a book of poetry by her late husband, uh, Henry Rago, published by the Regency Press in Chicago entitled The Summer Countries. Professor Rago has taught at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, Barrett College at Lake Forest, Illinois, Loyola University in Chicago, and she has been a participant in numerous symposia at the College Art Association meetings and has exhibited a number of solo shows in the United States. She has been awarded fellowships in art colonies such as Yaddo in New York, um, the Vermont Studio Center, Ragdale in Lake Forest, Illinois, uh, and across the foundation in Wyoming, and the uh, Bird Cliff Foundation of New York. She is at present a professor emeritus at Loyola University in Chicago. And she is here tonight, or this afternoon, to talk about her new exhibit, which is very, very interesting. That's one thing I've always liked going to Julie's shows, is it's not the same Julie every time. All of her, just a lot of her techniques and inspiration, creativity show through, but she is not afraid to ex experiment. So she will tell us about this latest exhibit. Thank you. Oh, and Claire Mount would like to just say something for us, because Claire really is the inspiration behind this and the one who runs got these teas together and it's just wonderful thank you well thank you all for coming but the only thing i wanted to say was thank peggy puffer for providing this tea carolyn is not here this week and so peggy nicely did all this so thank you peggy and thank you julia go ahead thank you peggy and thank you claire um, <clears throat> Well, let's see, how can I get started with this? It started, actually, about a couple of years ago. I saw, an ex I saw a film which was called Agora. It was about the destruction of the library in Alexandria. And it made such an impression on me that I didn't know what I could make of it, but I, I was so traumatized by the sight in the film of what was happening when these hordes came into the library and started throwing manuscripts over the balcony in, into the court below. I wrote it down, and <clears throat> this is what I was feeling. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. Why don't right. you start with where you were, what you were feeling when they were throwing the stuff over the wall? Okay. It began when I read about the destruction of the Great Library of Alexandria in about 300 A.D. and saw a film called Agora, which showed an enraged mob of black rogue men throwing armloads of scrolls out into the street from the high balconies of the library. They floated, unrolling crazily, wildly, to crash down among more black hordes who looked like swarms of black ants milling about below. I couldn't get this image out of my mind, thinking of all these wonderful, important documents being destroyed by hordes of bandits. And I, I know, of course, that civilizations grow and burgeon and decline, and during that period they are left with fragments of what had been. The destruction of precious volumes and artifacts in Timbuktu is a recent example of what happens in wars and conflicts where ignorant armies clash by night. To borrow Matthew Arnold's words, the, the night being the darkness of ignorance and greed. Mm -hmm. However, what happens sometimes in these conflicts is that there are other people who manage to save these precious objects. This actually happened recently in Timbuktu. I learned that locals have long stashed ancient documents under the brick floors or in the walls of their houses out of fear of invading armies. Mm -hmm. 
So we know that much of the recent pillaging had been prevented. Hope lies always at the bottom of Pandora's box. But anyway, <clears throat> as I, I, I've always loved books. I've loved their weight, the texture of the paper, the character of various typefaces. Those mysterious marks on paper that express all human thought, poetry, literature, mathematics, astronomy, science, and music, too. Um, I, I, uh, I started putting down these words, obscure, unknown, ancient, misunderstood, misinterpreted, unread, neglected, destroyed, intact, scattered, missing pages, lost in translation, found, reinterpreted, saved. So much for, for reading all of this, but what I want to say now is, is what happened then afterwards. Uh, I went on the internet and I found all kinds of interesting marks on paper, on papyrus, on all sorts of things. And it was a treasure trove of, of things that I had never really seen before. And so I really I went on a, on a journey. This is all winter. It's a great thing to do in the winter <laughs> when everything is, is impossible to get through outside. So I just stayed in my little cave and, and discovered some of these things. So um, I found Persian, uh, ancient Armenian, uh, Latin, um, what else? Um, and then, as a little relief, I started playing with some paper that I had made. It was handmade uh, paper that you'll find on that wall. And I played with marks. So they're just marks. They're like chicken scratches. They don't need anything. Uh, but I played with them and um, you know, made what, what seemed like a language, which wasn't really a language. It was just marks. And that, that was my own things. But then, I started looking at these other things and, and making copies or, or making um, something that was close to what was what I saw <clears throat> and um, did this, put this, mounted it uh, and put it in frames and that's what, what you see here. Uh, I don't have any, uh, uh, any real translations of any of this and if anybody knows ancient Armenian and find something that, that isn't right. Or that you don't Keep it to it. yourself. <laughs> um, this, this happens to be a, a play on that. I think it was so beautiful. I really love that especially because it, it had all kinds of wonderful marks that looked something like, like English. I, I could see sevens and I could see eights. I could see C's and I could see an A, sort of an odd looking A, that sort of thing. But I don't really know what it means. For me, it's just the marks that are kind of beautiful. Um, and then I found this, which is an Egyptian um, thing that was scrawled on a wall not too long ago. And the translation of it was, as they breathe, they lie, which has to do with what happened to the government. Oh. <laughs> That's the only one that I know. Where was the wall? In Egypt somewhere. Egypt. So, that's, that's the gist of what I wanted to tell you. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I love that long one over there. What is that? That's um, the Armenian alphabet. Oh, give me that. Fantastic. The whole thing is just so creative and beautiful. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I, I used models that were there. I, I of course, twitched, twitched some things, you know. So how did you get the paper to look old like that? What oh, did you do? Oh, I scrambled it up and I poured ink <laughs> over it and, you know, wow. that sort of thing. You aged it. Aged it. I, I, somebody told me, you know, you can, you can burn the edges. And I thought, no, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I started, and I oh, thought it was not fire. Did you say you made the paper? Or? The, I made this paper, but this paper I had. It was a lot of it was paper that I had saved. Um, it was me. from India, different places, um, Japan, um, handmade paper. How did, how did you make this paper? Yeah. This paper? Oh, it's a long, long process. I was at a workshop uh, a couple years ago. This paper making workshop, and they had equipment there that was wonderful. You, you take paper pulp, or you make paper pulp, 
and you can make it actually yourself if you want to uh, out of uh, actually cloth the, the dryer go into the dryer and soak it in water and put it in a um, what do they call that a blender a blender right? <laughs> and then you, you spread it on a, on a screen in the sun and let it dry and then you got a sheet of paper but it isn't easy it takes a while <laughs> and I didn't really want to do it you know I just had too many ideas I didn't want to bother with, with all of that but I happen to have this paper and so I use that but that's how paper is made Oh. And, and the paper that they make all over the world is just beautiful. It comes, it comes from India, it comes from Persia, it comes from China. Um, you know, they, they, that's, what, that's what paper was long ago, made from Can cloth. it come from mushrooms? Pardon? Can it come from mushrooms? Probably. I heard someone who did Probably. Hmm. I mean, people have been so innovative about, about making things and inventing things. Why not? Want to try it sometime? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Can you tell when you look at the paper where it's made? No, I can't. no. I can't. So it's just they all look more or less the same? Well, you know, when you go to an art store, for instance, there's a, there's a place in Central Square that I go to that has a, its artists and craftsmen's store. And they have, they have wonderful piles of paper, some from India, some from uh, Japan. Um, mm -hmm wonderful watercolor paper from Japan that's really thick, or rice paper that's thinner that you're supposed to use with ink. Um, Silk? So, Silk? I don't know. I never asked. If you find out, let me know. Uh, Julia, when I first saw these, I imagined that you had made up all the messages on here. They're actually copied? Yeah, they're copies mostly. All right. Wow. Did you use a pen or a brush for the letters? I used a, a brush for some and a, a nib pen that was wide. I had a couple of them that were narrow and wide, different things. But it was it was ink that I used because it was I wanted it to be permanent. Was that um, India ink? India ink, yeah. And was that a Croquel pen? Yes. Well, you know, there are different, different nibs. Mm. Some are, are fine, some are wide. No, calligraphy pen. Calligraphy pen. Mm. Yes, yes, you have different different kinds, mm. about six or seven different different wow. kinds, and you, you can use different colors. There's permanent ink that's different colors. Mostly I use black and brown, I think, and some red I see. Okay. Mm. Any more questions? I just want to say it feels like an act of love that mm. that. It has something to do with enduring and surviving. And That's true. Yeah. I really love, I love <coughs> marks. I love writing and old books. and um, Just the beauty of, of it all is, is something that I really am entranced by because that's, that's what it used to be. Well, people don't write anymore. Children aren't taught to write in schools. It's true. They print, and it's terrible printing, too. <laughs> Especially when they're texting, they're not spelling all. Oh, <laughs> <It's just laughs> <a R. laughs> yes, all they've write. got are thumbs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you do all the framing yes. and matting yourself? Yeah. Well, there wasn't much matting. I just well, mounted it. That's, on, on that's a lot of it. Yeah. Did you make the frames? No, I didn't make them, but I, I scrounged around in, in stores and uh, resale places to, to get frames. Mm -hmm. In the swap table? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one with some musical notes there. Yeah. Is that a copy from something also? Yes, it is. Um, from um, the Middle Ages when they were doing these illuminated manuscripts. Mm. There's one that I found that I like so much. I'm sure you'll see it. It's, it's called Summer is a Coming In. Summer is a Coming In. And I did that toward the end of, of all of this. And I thought, oh, I'm so glad that summer is coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have, I haven't looked. Uh, is that the only one in English? Well, that was, that's Latin. Oh, no, that was English. So it's it's English. 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 It sounds English. It was in English. English. Because so was well, my next question was, do you feel like doing it in well, from old English books? <coughs> I know I mean, there's, there's a lot to write. So beautiful. There's just a, a pile of stuff that I could do this for the rest of my life. I guess. I think so. 
but I don't think I want to. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to go out with my watercolors and, and do something with nature, I think. Can you imagine a, a, a very big fat scroll and you keep unrolling it and, and this stuff keeps coming out? Histories <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you all for coming. It's been a pleasure. I want to say that there are more in the living room, but they were having a meeting. Let me oh. see if I can get in there now so you can also look there. Go sit in the sheet with the numbers and the, you know, of no, the... No, I didn't do that yet, I'm afraid. But um, I will, I will, the next time I come, I'll bring a sheet of the numbers. I don't know why I forgot that. And would you also say something about the provenance of, of, of them all? Like which ones are Hebrew, which ones are Armenian, and stuff like that? All right, the room is available now, and there are others in there that you probably would like to see. Can we go in that way? Um, yes, you can go in this way. I should do that, shouldn't I? <clears throat> well, she's, what you're describing really is a booklet with the Paintings no, and an like explanation. In a gallery, an eight and a half by eleven sheet with the numbers, with the numbers and, uh, and, and what they come from. And the type. I'll do that. Anything from Afghanistan, Pakistan, any of those areas of the world? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Except some of the Persian writing would be from yeah. Durant, you know. yeah. and that. Which is the Persian? One on the end. Ah, oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's something I have to do. You may have already answered this in a different way, but um, I'm curious about how you became inspired to do these. This particular style of art, and, uh, which is quite new, I, I've never seen anything like it. Well, as I say, I was just thinking about how much, how much I love books and and um, writing in books and what they mean to me. They're for me, they're very precious, and when I think about their, the destruction of these things, it Paints me very much. That's why I just got started. I just thought I'd just have to do something about it, and that's all I could do. The public schools need you. <laughs> <laughs> I used to teach in public schools, and I taught at the university, um, which was very rewarding. I thought. Julia, have you have any children been in to see, that you know of have been in to see it or any of your grand no, your grand they, because I think it would be interesting to know how they relate how children not young young what well, young children but you know sort of middle school children how they would relate to something that is sort of it's paper and text driven and yet you can't read the text except in those those two that are in English and and, and I just, it would be interesting I think. I'd like to know what the reaction would be. They might, yeah. They might just say, oh, no. they, they might know, but I bet no. you some of them wouldn't. I bet you some of them would be would quite taken with it. I want to just yes. say that my granddaughter in the Lincoln Public Schools writes beautifully. She's taught to write. Oh, oh, oh good. That's good. Right. That's wonderful. Glad to hear that. That's great. Did she do that? Because of the Lincoln schools or in spite of them? <laughs> well, I think that's where she learned it. I think that's what she learned in school. Uh -huh. They taught writing. They teach writing. I, she's in the seventh grade right. and she writes beautifully. And she learned it in our Lincoln schools. That's all I can tell you. I don't know exactly <laughs> when or Very nice. Could anyone so this would like to go out and get something more to eat or ask more questions, but if you either go around that way or through this way, there are others <coughs> in the other room that you may have How about a round of applause? Yeah.